All right, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about sling management. Um, we're using an Edgar Sherman's design sling, which is actually something that we now sell as a distributor. One of my favorite features about this sling is that it's self-capturing using an elastic loop. So I have it stowed here. You simply bundle it up and put that leading end through the elastic loop here, which I'm sure you can see pretty well. Um, best part about that is you simply open it, and there it is, right? Um, once it's opened up, to don the sling, you just give yourself a little bit of slack. It's this adjustable two-point system. And once it's on your body, you can adjust however much slack you want. Um, that's gonna go into a little bit more in depth, end user stuff, how's your armor set up, are you running a backpack, breaching tools and all those kinds of things. But just for today, we're gonna talk about basic sling management stuff. So the way I'm running it right now is how a lot of people run a two-point sling. It's over my primary shoulder, under my off-hand shoulder, and I'm left-handed, so don't judge me too hard here. For you guys that are right-handed, it would simply be the opposite way, right? Um, this is just a typical carry method for a two-point sling. It rests pretty normally, it's close to my shoulder pocket, and for me, I have it dialed pretty much all the way out. I'm all the way back to this clip here. Now, what if I wanted to bend over and do something, whether it was handcuffing somebody, searching something, applying a charge, or something like that, when I bend over, the weapon is hanging free, right? Not the best thing for me. Depending on what you're using, what you're running, you might be able to tighten it all the way in and it does this. It's still down in my way. So some people's instinct is to put it over their back, like so, and that's fine. But again, it's gonna depend on my running breaching tools, am I running a, a backpack and other things. So I, I really like what's called an administrative carry. For the administrative carry, we're just gonna start everything from this position. I'm just gonna take possession of the rifle with my uh, non-dominant hand, swim my arm through here, swim this arm over, and now I've switched shoulders. I can simply put the rifle behind my pistol. Now, from here, it's a little floppy and wobbly, right? So what do I have to do? Well, I can just suck some of that slack in, and now I can bend over, do whatever I need, take a knee, place a charge, and I'm good to go. Well, how do I get back to a fighting position from here? Take it out from behind the pistol where the retention is. I can switch those hands over if I need to, swim my arm back through, and now I have what you hear a lot of people will call a tactical necklace. Notice it's only around my neck, see? So, not the best thing, right, for weapon retention, but it is good for fighting. I can swap shoulders really easily. Uh, again, if I need more slack because of that, with the way that Edgar Sherman Designs sling is made, I just dialed in and out. So if I wanted to do a shoulder swap, it doesn't choke me, right? Um, there's a lot of other manipulations for this sling. Again, it's gonna depend on the end user. If I'm a high port team, and I got this thing dialed in super tight, I may be limited on my presentations, right? Again, that's what makes this great. If I'm a low port team, that doesn't matter necessarily as much because the sling never has to come up above this point. But a lot of people are just gonna be running it in that tactical necklace method. All right, so just briefly, what problems would this cause me if my sling's dialed all the way in in a traditional two-point carry method if I wanted to go prone? Remember we talked about presenting the rifle from a high ready, I'm limited on this movement here, right? Well, when I lay down, this is coming all up in my business. So if we wanted to be effective for prone fighting, we talked about that fighting position of a tactical necklace, and now I can just drop straight to the ground and shoot. No problems at all, right? But wouldn't have been able to do it if I was in this position. So just to show it one more time, let's say we're starting from here from a fighting position. I wanna go back to a more comfortable carry position. Non-dominant hand goes through. I'm just carrying this thing around. I can be hands-free while I'm up and doing stuff. If I need to fight from here, I can. I can just open it up a little bit. If I need to do something more administrative, I can either swim this through first, take possession of it with this hand, or we can do like I did before, where I'm swimming this arm through and grabbing it, swimming this arm out and stowing it. Either way, it ends up in the same position. When I get it back out, back in a fighting position. That's just really, really, really basic sling management. Some of you guys that are watching this may have seen a different method. Um, if you have, just put it in the comments below. We're always looking to learn stuff. So thank y'all for watching. If you have anything that you'd like to add to it, just put it in the comments.